Embracing the strange, today's illusion is wayfaring labors. I love the concept sketch, the hunch of it. It's giving very much art goes on, so I will in the best way. But for some reason, when I read you it, I doubted I could render the burden look of the body and maintain the distortion of the neck. So I made it more horizontal. Hunched, the figure creeps onward, carrying its head on its back. From the elongated neck, the head has swung up through the gaping torso into the figure's back, where it's perched precariously, held in place only by one hand. The neck is distorted by rubbernecking perspectives. It is overwhelmed by the various perspectives and routes of which it could follow. If it should follow at all. The furthermost arm is outstretched, feeling its way with caution. It wasn't until I was painting this that it struck me as very wayfaring stranger, you know, Johnny Cash. When I was in elementary school, we did the play Lewis and Clark. I was a narrator. Ever since I heard it, I love that song. I have an affinity to sad songs. They make me feel accepted in a way. There's a strange comfort to them. Artistically, it's the expression of strong emotion done in an artful way. The conscious of sadness with the thoughtful composition of the music. Well, that's only if it's done right. Those are like core components of good things. It's good and sad songs. Wayfaring Stranger has a similar tone, albeit more folky, to another song I've mentioned before. Hope There's Someone by Anthony and the Johnsons. Even a bit of Knocking on Heaven's Door also by them. So that's part of the title explained. I also thought of Hozier's work song. Both of them kind of have a Negro spiritual vibe to me, like Nina Simone's Blackbird song, but with more production. There's also a glimmer of Paloma Faith's Stargazer. You might think that it deviates from the theme, but only superficially from how I see it. Um, some of the lyrics of the song go, Stargazer, Heartbreaker, Wish You Were Here. How will I shine anymore without your atmosphere? How will I shine anymore when you're not here? Stargazer, don't disappear. How will I shine anymore when you're not here? In my everyday, the moments I wake up lonely, you're the only one who can bring the stars for me. Give me a shooting star and I'll make a wish for you. Although it reads as a love story, it also has the undertone of representation, longing, and hope, which overlays aspects of the down and out sort of disfranchised people. And when it comes to people, they sometimes need to see themselves represented to feel they can succeed in certain endeavors, as well as just in life in general. That reminds me of the issue people have with characters on certain shows, like Girlfriends, people had a problem with Tony Child. On Pose, people had a problem with Elektra. Viewers criticize the shows for having specifically these black characters, but the thing is that there are people like them. Just because it isn't your narrative or doesn't align with your values doesn't necessarily make their stories any less worthy of being told. I see it as, a, you know, a come up is a come up, regardless of how you came up, you know? Sure, elements of that can dictate your character, but at the end, it is what it is. You know, you got there, you got there. And the real criticism of Poe should be the Paris is Burning retellings without public acknowledgement. I only found out because other viewers pointed it out that this was, you know, basically a plagiarized story. The same sort of issues could be raised about, like, the mob or gang culture. Those people will, those people will exist regardless of if they're represented, and there's still a valid point of interest in storytelling. That is basically how I felt about Their Eyes Are Watching God once I learned about the criticism that it faced when it was published initially from other Black authors. And they're like, why would Zora Neale Hurston elevate these people and like give them a platform when they're like the worst of our kind? And I'm like, well, how sadity can you be? But anyway, um, I recently discovered the artist Tamara Dilampica, bisexual, apparently rose obsessed and a serial cheater known seducer, and maybe a social climber, but interesting, superbly talented, very much an art deco queen. I think she needs a movie in this day and age because those are low-key icon qualities.
especially say if she were a man, like she would be like up there, up there. So if you take anything away from this video, it is art, truly art, and art goes on. So I will in my next video. Thank you for watching.